So this is one thing I want to show you guys right here. Uh, now it's saying start broadcast. Start broadcast. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so um, you guys see this? Uh, this is the end of the strap. And what what would you call this little part here, uh, Mike? That's the band valve where you hook the pump into. Okay. And let me let me see here. This valve, this little bitty. Can you guys see my mouse or not, George? Yes. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. This little piece right here has become my best friend. And that's what I wanted to tell you guys. It took me probably a week before I found this little guy right here. That's yes. become my best friend. And I'll tell you guys why. Because obviously, I'm used to working out for an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. And on these bands, you're done in 20 minutes. Believe me, you're ready to be done. If you're working out, if you're actually doing something for 20 minutes, you're, you're ready to be done because you're out of breath. You're sweating. You've got water dripping off your hair. You're, you've definitely moved into the burn zone. Um, and so when you, when you know you've only got 20 minutes, I don't want to waste time. Like I want to make sure for that 20 minutes, I'm going the whole time. Well, hooking my pump up, you know, hooking the pump up, let me, let me get you guys a picture of the pump quickly. Hooking the pump up to let a little bit of air out is, uh, is not conducive when you want to make sure you're you're getting 20 minutes worth of workout in. So what happened to me was after about a week, I would notice that during my workout, I would start and I would have my bands at a certain pressure. And once that once my muscles started to swell from working out, all of a sudden I would get a little pain in the actual muscle, like not a burn. The burn's one thing, obviously you're going to get that, but this was more like a muscle pain, like almost borderlining on, on the borderline of a cramp. Okay. And so what I then wanted to do was, man, how do I release a little bit of this pressure? Well, I, again, obviously taking the uh, pump and hooking it back up to the band was very cumbersome and uh, you know took a lot of time and now all of a sudden I've burned you know two minutes of my 20 minutes right and so anyway the point is is that this little valve right here if you just take your thumbnail and just give it a quick little push you know you might lose 20 pounds of pressure you know, if that's not enough, give it another little push and you'll you'll know you'll lose a little bit of pressure in the band, which makes room for the fact that your uh, that your um, uh, muscles have now swollen. OK, so that that little thing right there has become my absolute best friend. And I'll show you guys this as well. Let's see here. Let's go to this image. There we go. This is your pump that pumps the, the bands up. And I usually start my bands on 250. And guys, I'll just tell you something. I'm using, let me show you this. I'm using this, I'm using this particular resistance band and that's the only one I'm using. I think it's a 20 or 25 pound band. And so if you know much about bands, you don't usually end up pulling 20 or 25 pounds, especially if you're not exactly in the middle, pulling on both sides at the same time. So if I had to guess, I'm mostly working out with 12 and a half to about 15 pounds. Would you think I'm pretty accurate there, Dr. Mike? Yes, yes, you're accurate that it's not an exact science, but you know, you're creating yeah. a resistance similar. Yeah. And so guys, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a 20 minute workout every single day. And I never used to work out every day, by the way, never, ever, ever have I worked out every day. I've always been a four to five day a week kind of guy. And I'm now working out every day. And the reason I'm working out every day is because when you get the nitric oxide release in your body, there's nothing you've ever done that feels kind of quite that good. Now, you know, you might say, well, hey, Jay, I've had some interesting drugs back in my, back in the day. I don't care. The, the way these make you feel is you just feel like Superman. OK. And again, I thought that from the from the beginning that that was the HGH release. And then Dr. Mike corrected me and said, no, 
It's the nitric oxide. And of course, on our on our uh, podcast together, guys, you heard him go through all the different things that come from that, for, even from the per- perspective of how it eliminates pain, right? By kind of turning on your body's natural ibuprofen. And so anyway, I'm using that band to do a bicep workout, a tricep workout, and a, uh, by the way, this is not my home. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a bench in the house that we're in. I don't want anybody getting any ideas. And um, But I'm doing a, a, a bicep, a tricep, and a shoulder workout. And I do the whole thing in 20 minutes. So I'm going. And here's the thing, guys. When you get these bands, you know, it tells you, okay, do your set of 30 and then rest for 30 seconds, maybe a minute if you feel like you need it. Well, for me, if I do if I do 30 sets of bicep, while yes, my bicep is burning, I'm I'm in really, really good shape. I go right, I, I take a five, 10 second breather and I go right into 30 sets on my triceps. And then I take a five second, 10 second breather and I go into 30 sets on my shoulders and then I rotate back around because now I've given a nice little rest to the bicep. And so for me, I literally just go for 20 straight minutes doing bicep, tricep, shoulder, bicep, tricep, shoulder, and I switch up the exercises. One day I might do face pulls. Another day I might have the bands on the floor, pulling them up like I have a, like I have a barbell in my hand, an entire long barbell. So each time I work out, I just switch it up a little bit. One time I might be doing shoulder pulls, and the next time I might be doing you know uh, shoulder lifts, right? So I switch it up and and then I always do shrugs at the end of every workout. I'll do like two sets of 50 shrugs with as tight as I can get this band to go. And that's my upper body workout. I do that every other day. And then on the other day, so the opposite day, I put the bands on my legs and I either go out and walk the steps or I will also jump rope. And for me, jump rope is always, I can get a thousand jump rope to 1200 jump rope in 20 minutes. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a thousand to 1200 jump rope in 20 minutes. And I don't do nonstop jump rope. I do, you know, first set's always about 150. The last set is 150 to 200 and the sets in the middle are shorter, but I do speed sets where I can do, I can take the time it took me to do the first set 150 jump rope i'll cut that time in half and do 120 say jump rope and so i do speed sets and again soaking wet and i've got the straps strapped around my leg so those are my workouts just very simple no equipment no dumbbells no barbells this strap um i i do throughout the week with and without the bands I, i've been on a push-up regiment for probably i don't know seven eight years of my life where i usually will do, get 100 push-ups in every other day just to keep the chest in shape keep the shoulders strong and i can't get, i can't even get 50 push-ups with the straps on forget about it the first set i can always get 25 in and then after that i'm like down to 13 And then after that, I'm down to like six or seven, and I literally just can't get them in. Without the straps on, I can still very easily do 100 push-ups. And so I do do some push-ups with the straps on. Um, I also will do a couple times a week. I'll just, in an off minute, I'll throw the straps on, and I'll do like a minute, a couple one-minute sets of proper horse stance where your thighs are parallel to the floor. And so those are those are the things I'm doing. But here's what's phenomenal. For the first time in my marriage, my wife is looking at me coming out of the shower. She's looking at me walking around the house with in a bathing suit and she's going, "Holy cow." She's like, "I'm afraid to use those cuz she said I don't want to build that kind of muscle." And you know, she's not she's not had them on at all. But you got to know something about my wife. She's unbelievably fit. I mean, she's had a six pack her whole life, but she doesn't want to build muscles like she doesn't want to have like muscles, muscles. But I do. 
I want to look fit. I want to look younger. I want to, I want to be that picture of health at every age is kind of how I view it. I don't have, there's really not a lot about me that's full of vanity. I don't have a lot of that. I don't color my hair. I don't care that I have gray hair. Um, you know, I am very, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely like a manscaper. Like I like to keep my body in really good shape and take care of things. But, you know, part of that is the workout. But what's crazy, and this is what I started with, is I'm spending one third the time I used to spend. I'm so excited about it. I'm doing it every day because of how it makes me feel. I never felt like this when I worked out with weights for 50 years. I never felt like this just did not happen. It did make me have an overall good feeling about myself, being that I was in the gym and taking spin classes and working out and staying fit. That gave me an overall wellness feeling. But no, I'm talking about a feeling you can feel. Like you get done with even your jump rope. And yeah, you're going to sit down and rest a minute. But boy, after that rest, you're going to have, you're going to be like, man, do I feel good? What do you want to do? Where, where do we want to go? And that's the thing that I'm excited about with these bands is I'm using, I'm, I've, I've freed up two thirds of my workout time. So two thirds of that time, I got it back. And guys, you know, the, the more successful you get, a lot of people hear me say, they hear me say, well, nobody writes in my calendar, but me. And you guys can, you could hear me say that and you could think to yourself, well, Jay must be a couch potato. George, is Jay a couch potato? Hello, I, George. I, I, heck to the no, I, I was on mute. There's no way. I mean, we had this conversation just earlier this week. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, you have not let any moss grow under your feet. It's true, guys. I mean, my calendar is full, but it's full with the things I want to do. Today, I wanted to take this 30 minutes or an hour and come here and offer you guys some possible support, give you some, you know, some tips and tricks that I've learned with these bands, right? But I choose that. I'm passionate to help you guys. I'm passionate about these bands. If somebody will stand still for a couple minutes, I'll sit, they'll buy a pair of bands, I promise you. Because look, not very many things in my life have changed my life. When I, when I first went on the X39 patches, that changed my health. I mean, I was even suffering from a broken foot for two years. And within 30 days, my, hook, my foot was healed up. So it changed my life and I still wear them to this day. These bands have changed my life. When I got into crypto, it changed my life. It's not, it's not the typical cliche where someone goes, hey, man, if you go eat at that restaurant, it'll change your life. That's cliche. I'm talking about really change your life. And, you know, again, I'll say it publicly. Thank you, Dr. Mike, for your invention. I mean, I know you didn't invent BFR, but these are this is you, you hold the patent on this product. You know, I would almost in my in, in my own opinion, call it a medical device. I mean, I think it's fantastic. So thank you for that, Dr. Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for bringing it to everybody. So um, what did I miss here? Um, and, and, and am I doing everything right? I just gave you my regiment. Tell me, tell me if there's something I can do better, something I'm doing that's bad. And when I when I feel that when I especially when I have the leg bands on, Dr. Mike, if I start going up and down steps after about the third step, I mean, after about the third set, I kind of I kind of feel a pain in the actual muscle that's underneath the strap. And so that's when I start just loosening up a little bit of the pressure. I, I, the, the, there's still a lot of air in there, but I'm just giving it enough to where I don't feel that pain. Am I doing right? Yes. Yes. You know what you're doing, right, Jay? You, you've adopted a lifestyle. It's for the people on the call, everybody, every one of you is going to use the bands differently. Some of you are going to you know, Jay's got his workout. I, I've got my workout. You know, Doug's on here. Good buddy of mine, Doug Zuko. Thanks, Doug, for, you know, bringing me to this group. He's got his workout. The key is not how you use the bands. It's are you still doing it in 30 days? Because if you're still doing it in 30 days, you're, you're elevating nitric oxide growth hormone. We're going to talk about it. But you've completely changed the trajectory of your life. 
because you've, you're basically in anabolic mode versus stress cortisol mode. And if you're doing it in 30 days, Jay's at 60 days, I mean, like he's told you, it's a different kind of life. You're going to live longer. You're going to live better. So everybody on the call, you you want to find what you like to do. Some of you have vibration plates, rebounders, rowers. You like to play pickleball. I mean, we've got all the different protocols for you to implement it. So I think the big thing I want to start off with is find something you like to do and add the bands to it. And that'll be the key. Is what do we do with most exercise programs, right? We're done in 30 days. You know, we've quit the membership. We quit showing up, you know, because we don't get results. So, and, and we're going to talk about that. Why? Why is Jay getting results now that are just completely different than he was getting before? But Jay, where where would you like to lead this? What, what question do you think is most important? Well, let's do this. Let's bring Doug on. Doug, I've unmuted your mic. And so, Doug, you can uh, unmute your mic on your end. Come in and join us. And I'm also going to have uh, David Wingo. I'm going to have him. That's not his real name. That's just what he uses here. I'm going to have him come on. Dave, if you can unmute your mic, please, on your control panel. Doug, did you get yours? Yeah, there you are, Doug. Yep, I'm here. So, uh, Doug, you've had these straps in your life for, what, a couple of years now? Yeah, and I... Um really didn't receive all the benefits because I used them wrong. You know, I've been lifting weights all my life. I, you know, really oh, yeah. enjoyed life is 65 years. I'm 65 now. Yeah. And you're still working out, right? I mean, I've seen pictures of you. You're definitely not sitting at home. Oh, absolutely. But it just, you know, I'll just be honest with you. It's not as much fun. I'm not talking about with the bands. I'm just talking about lifting weights, right? Lifting weights became just not as much fun as it was 10 years ago. You know, when, you know, I used to work out really hard and push a lot of weight, and I was able to do that. But after multiple shoulder injuries, you know, you're not able to do that anymore. So I, working out just was a habit, but it wasn't that much fun. But now I can tell you this, it's fun again because I start using the bands the correct way, and I start getting all, you know, I'm a bit of a hard head, so forgive me here. But, you know, Dr. Mike introduced me to the bands. I used them. I loved them. They, you know, they were incredible but when i start using them the right way wow it would have changed and that's what i really like about it because right now i look forward to working out i try to work out every day with them you know i do a, a little different regimen i go into that if you if you want me to but basically after i'm done working out only for about 12 15 minutes i feel great you know you work out in the gym for an hour hour and a half and you, you're beat you can't even function for the day, but you use the bands, you get great results, you feel fantastic afterwards. So you can do it right before work, right before a meeting, right before anything, and you don't have to feel run down. Mm, yeah, that's exactly what I like, too. I, I've actually now gotten to where I think four times now, maybe five times, I've done two workouts in the same day. Usually I'll find myself if I get up at four o'clock in the morning, which I do sometimes, usually I'm a five, five thirty in the morning kind of person, but I'll, I'll, I will, I will wake up naturally a couple days a week at 4 a.m. Those are the days that I find myself getting into workouts because I'll get up and I'll get that first workout in before five o'clock in the morning. And so sometimes later that day I'm going, oh, what, what, what have I not accomplished today? Oh, I didn't do my workout. Oh, no, wait a minute. I did do my workout. It was just so it was so long ago. And I now feel so energized and so good. I go, OK, let me just do another one. And I'll I don't do the same body part. I'll, I will go ahead and like do, say, upper body and lower body in the same day. But man, it's just transformed my life for sure. I, I'm going to do this. I'll keep saying this. I'm going to do this the rest of my life. And I'm actually rethinking, you know, my wife and I have been uh, looking at building a complex with pool, cold, hot therapy, red lights, all that stuff. And I was going to have like 1,500 square feet or, or maybe better uh, just for gym equipment. And I'm thinking to myself, man, what do I need all that for? I don't. Like I'm so content and getting, as Dr. Mike said, the results I've never gotten with a full set of weights. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty jazzed up about it. Um, Dave, uh, can you unmute your mic? 
Let's see, I had you unmuted and now you're muted back. Mm. Okay, now there we go. Dave, can you unmute your, there you go. So guys is a, a friend of mine. Um, he is on the bench team for quite a few years now. He travels the world. He's a big scuba diver. He's not a young man, but you wouldn't know that looking at him. He looks like a young man. Um, so he's very young at heart, very young in his body, but he's retirement age. He is retired from his career and from what he's done in crypto. And he's also a massive cyclist, which is hits home with me because I cycle. I mean, I cycle, he, he cycles way more than I do today, but when I was younger, I mean, I lived on a bicycle. And uh, so Dave, share share with us what you've been doing since you got your, your bands. I think you've had them for uh, what, a week, 10 days maybe? I've had them for uh, two weeks. Two weeks. And, and uh, my first thing being I'm kind of an analytical as I went through all the B3 band videos. Mike's even got a, a two hour mini course that I thought was really useful. Gave me a good background. Then I hit the internet and started looking at some of the history and, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of data. And I had some friends of mine that were way smarter than me go look at it and they go, yep, that is there. No doubt about it. And I'm like, wow, this it's taking the, you know, they always talk about this high intensity training that people do and how often people's bodies are wrecked. And I'm like, this is a way of doing high intensity training without hurting yourself and do it in a very uh, controlled way and um, very short and much everything. My big problem is for me is I like going to the gym kind of like the social aspect and now have this much quicker workout scenario so i'm i'm kind of sorting all that out and like jay and dr mike was talking about is we all finding our routine that we like doing to incorporate because dr mike on one of uh the intro calls told me you want to get you know when the workout you want to get that five minutes of burn let's say you do a 10 minute workout you'd like to be in the burn i i might correct me if i'm off but I, I remember you telling me you wanted like five minutes each for that session. And so, and I've been working to that where he told me like for biking, I was like, I'm having a hard time getting my legs burned and biking. He goes, well, sit up against a wall and do one of those squats, a supported squat and get your legs burning and then jump on the bike. It was like two or three minutes with the bands and then jump on the bike. And uh, I'm telling you, makes a big difference. And I was like, I can't squat on a wall more than two minutes and my legs start to burn. And um, so I'm starting to do short bike rides, uh, no more than 10 minutes. Uh, I'm trying to get myself in the burn within the first minute to two minutes and keep it there and pedal accordingly to, so I can feel it in my legs. And now I've got a whole routine where um, I, I'm not as strong as Jay. I have to do my push-ups on my knees so I can do my set because after about 10 or 15, my, my shoulders are lighten up. And, um, the last 15, I can really feel it. I wait, I wait 30 seconds and do it again. The second set, I'm feeling it by five or seven and I'm just trying to make it to the end. And then I do my stuff in my back and squats and all this, but, um, everybody's kind of got to get in to their own rhythm. They'll start noticing it. And when I started feeling the burn longer, I definitely had much more of a euphoric effect following the exercise. How's that? And, and uh, Dave, how old are you? I'm going to be 64 this year. 64. Um, I met you for the first time this past year. And I think you pass all day long for in your late 40s, early 50s. Um, <clears throat> And you're 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 already in great shape. I mean, you're not a person that's out of shape. Um, tell me what happens when you put the bands on and you go for a ride on your bike. Are you feeling something completely different than when you when you used to ride your bike without the bands? Talk to me about what's happened when you actually use the bands. I, I don't know that I can tell a difference yet with the bands in my biking. 
Yeah. But I texted yeah. you the other day that I did this crazy vertical. With, I have an ESS mountain bike. It's still a full-on mountain bike, but I I did like almost 2,000 feet of vertical in 14 miles. And I'm thinking to myself, I never do that much at one time, and I did it under two hours. So I don't know, but it sure in the heck didn't hurt anything, and I definitely want to incorporate it in. It's sort of like having high-intensity training to make your biking that much better. And on their B2 Band's video, I think the intro letter, they had a, a guy that was a, a championship 24-hour mountain bike rider and discussed he was discussing how he uses the bands and how he's really had to concentrate on not training as much because he doesn't need to. And his times have been going, getting better. And I've been trying to follow that. So um, that's a work in progress. I think it's going to get there, though. No problem, actually. Yeah, amen. Well, one thing that's happened for me, guys, thank you for that, Dave. Um, one thing that's happened for me is I take um, – I used to, uh, Dr. Mike, are you familiar with a guy, his name is Dr. Sears, and he did all the research on lung expansion. Are you familiar with him? No, I'm not. Okay. I did, I, I kind of went through his whole program maybe 10 years ago, and he he's basically won a couple of Nobel Prizes, and he's proven that the number one way to longevity in your lifetime is to have lung expansion. So sometime in your workout, he said, he said, here's all you have to do. Sometime in your exercise, whether you're working out with weights, swimming, jogging, walking, whatever it is, sometime in your workout, he said, get yourself out of breath for as much as three minutes. And it expands your lung capacity. And his 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 medical studies were all on expanded lung capacity is the secret to longevity in life okay so one of the things that's interesting is i do throughout the year i'll go for three four five months at a time and every single day while i'm laying on my beamer i'll do the wim hof breathing technique i'll do three rounds of wim hof so 11 minutes and i know exactly how much i can do well, I've been off the Wim Hof breathing for, I don't know, 60 days now, 70 days, 80 days, something like that. And just here a couple of days ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to doing my Wim Hof again. So I just kind of go on it, on it and off it throughout the year. I've been doing this for a couple of years. And when I did the Wim Hof two days ago for the first time after using these bands for 60 days, and I definitely get out of breath. I definitely. I personally go the whole 20 minutes. I don't want to waste a single second of those 20 minutes because I have a love of, of physical e exercise and I used to do it for an hour, hour and 20 minutes every couple of days. And so now that I'm not doing an hour to an hour and 20 minutes, I really want to get, I want to, I want to make the best of that entire 20 minutes. So anyway, I get completely out of breath, completely worked out completely soaking wet and i love that well obviously that's the only thing i've done different is these bands for 60 days and for two years i've been exactly the same on my wim hof two days ago when i did it on every single set i would so, so the first set you hold your breath for 30 seconds the second set you're holding your breath for a minute and the second the third set you're holding your breath for a minute and a half Every single set, I did 30 seconds extra on the holding of my breath, which tells me that I have expanded something in my physical fitness from using these bands. It's the only thing I've done different in my life, and I've been doing Wim Hof for two years and working out with weights the whole time. I'm contributing that to the bands. Is there anything you can think of that would have happened to me using these bands that would have helped me from a lung perspective to be able to do that? I mean, is there a medical reason for this? I'm just asking you because you're a doctor, that's all. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've got a question here for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So let me take an opportunity to explain to everyone how you should look at exercise, right? Because you hear CrossFit, 
right? Well, that's anaerobic and aerobic. That's strength training and aerobic. And you, you know, you typically, okay, go to the gym, get your 30 minutes of cardio, then get your strength training. You know, why, why is there this two types of exercise? Why do runners not have muscle and why do guys who have typically a ton of muscle not have cardio health? Because there's, there's two different exercise pathways. You've heard it, aerobic, anaerobic, or slow twitch, fast twitch, that's aerobic and anaerobic, or strength train and cardio. And, and both have benefits on the body. And let's take it one step further. What are the benefits? Here's, here's really what you should know. The goal of cardio or aerobic exercise is to release nitric oxide. Uh, cardio aerobic means with oxygen. Where's the oxygen come from? The blood flowing into the muscles carrying the oxygen. The goal of strength training, which is anaerobic, it's without oxygen, anaerobic, you're using muscle glycogen or sugar, different fuel. So strength training, anaerobic, using glycogen, fast twitch muscle fibers, diff it's a different exercise pathway. Your goal there is to release growth hormone. So let's take a little formula here. If you get the perfect workout, you're gonna create an aerobic, let's call it a plus one. You're gonna create a fatigue, the body's going to adapt. If you've got something to write with, write this down, because this is fascinating. Plus one. Plus one means you're going to stimulate an adaptative positive response in your body. Now, if you go do a anaerobic at the same time, anaerobic workout, right? You know, you go do the strength training, the weights, fast twitch. You're going to get a plus one there. Okay, so that's plus two. You're going to create a positive plus two adaptation in your body. But hold on a second. Here's the problem. We're not 18 anymore. There's this little thing called cortisol. The stress hormone. So if you work out too hard, too long, or you create pain, you release cortisol. Cortisol is a negative. So look at this here. You go to the gym, you get on the aerobic, you get a plus one, you go do the strength, you get a plus one, but you worked out too long. For some of you, too long is 20 minutes. Shocking, but you went an hour. Right, this is probably Jay, right? He's been doing this and he creates a negative two cortisol. Everybody on the call, what's plus two, minus two? It's zero. You're getting zero results, but you're doing the work. It's like th same thing with Doug, right? About 10, 12 years ago, can't do it anymore. Oh, Doug can go create a plus four. What if you could create a plus four? You could create a better, more deeper aerobic fatigue. I'm talking about when you do your cardio, it's dramatically less. But instead of a plus one, you hit a plus two. I mean, you really did something serious that's going to cause adaptation, like running sprints. But we're not running sprints. We're going to do something easier. And then you did your strength training, right? And you didn't beat yourself up. There's no stress. There's no, And you created a plus two. It's like you're training like a professional bodybuilder. A plus two nitric oxide response out of your aerobic workout, five minutes, by the way, plus two on your strength training, another five, 10 minutes. This is what Jay and Doug are doing. Now you're at plus four. Okay, now we got to factor in cortisol, but wait a second. We're not beating up our body. We're not overtraining. We're not sore. It's like Doug said, I'm not tired. Yeah, he didn't beat up his body trying to get the plus two. For everybody on the call, what's four? minus zero, it's a four. Do you want a plus four anabolic nitric oxide growth hormone? I'm talking rocket fuel, it's like you're juicing. Or do you want a zero? Well, these guys went from zeros to plus four. Let me back up one more time. Jay is working out. He's creating a positive aerobic result, a positive anaerobic. He's doing the work, but the cortisol is blocking it. Literally just reverse it. So he's working out and pretty much getting a zero. He's, he's standing still, right? He's just staying in the same place. And we hurt, and we, you know, we, we're tired, and we get all these symptoms of cortisol. And then you switch. You eliminate the stress. You don't lift the heavy weights. You don't go too long. And, and again, I'm going to teach you how too long is when you come on the live calls. If any of you haven't been on the live calls with your man, all you got to do is get on one live call. But we're going to create a positive anabolic response. So what's that mean? Now you're going to have nitric oxide flowing. Okay, where does it come from? Nitric oxide is sitting in the 
blood vessels. And it's filled, you fill it with good diet, beets and, and nitric oxide synthase. That's, that's what makes nitric oxide. But you don't release it. Here's the fooler. You're being told that you're releasing nitric oxide. You're not. Not the one we need. You're, you're producing it. But to release it, you've got to create fatigue aerobically. Okay? What's that feel like? Oh, that's the runner's high, right? You get on the Peloton, you run the sprints, and you climb, right? And you get in the runner's high. But guess what? We're not 22-year-old models anymore, right? Those are all 25-year-old models that are doing that on Peloton, right? Where most of us are middle-aged and, and got some stress and pain. So we can't create this aerobic scenario where we can sprint, climb, get on the treadmill, run up and down the steps and release the nitric oxide because it hurts too much. But if you could, here's what happens. You would do three, four, five minutes of aerobic. It wouldn't be stressful. And as soon as your oxygen gets low enough, and that's because of the bands, your body releases nitric oxide. What do you feel? You feel like somebody hit you with rocket fuel. That's what Jay's talking about. I feel so good. I start my day. I get up at four. Doug says I do it before work. That's nitric oxide, everyone. Sitting in your body, just waiting for you to tap into it. Just sitting there waiting, right? Most of us, we're going to go through our whole life and we're not even going to tap it. We're just going to waste it because we're doing the wrong exercise. We've listened to the wrong so-called experts out there. So now you get this nitric oxide, this plus two. Now you're like, wow, you have more energy. Your brain's functioning better, anti-aging. It's anti, I mean, we could spend all day on what it does. It's rocket fuel and, and you need it in your life. Now, after you do your aerobic, you do a little strength training. Now you can do this on different days, but now, you know, Jay, now he goes and does his strength training. Now, remember, we want to get the anaerobic pathway going, the fast twitch muscle fibers. That typically requires heavy weight training. And think of it as a tool. Heavy weights is not what's creating growth hormone in your body. It's a tool to burn glycogen, i.e. the burn or the pump or the swell. When you create the burn for three to five minutes and you get that little swole feeling in your muscle, that's a trigger. And it doesn't have to be any, there doesn't have to be any micro tearing, any inflammation, doesn't have to be a single heavy weight. You can use the tubing like Jay's using. Your body responds to that trigger. Again, the trigger is not heavy weights. Heavy weights is a tool. The trigger is lactic acid. You feel the burn and you get the little pump feeling in your muscle. Here goes a little signal up your efferent nerve pathway to your brain. And it says, Hey, brain, Jay just did some fast twitch muscle work. He produced some lactic acid. Brain goes, okay, I'm going to change Jay because that's what our body does. Our body adapts and changes. I'm going to give him some growth hormone. Now, here comes the plus one or plus two growth hormone. But when there's cortisol from working out too hard and hurting yourself, it just basically blocks it. So, Jay, and, and you're going to hear this time and time again, I used to work out and nothing would happen. It's like you do all the work and you get no results. Yeah, because you're producing cortisol because we're not 18 anymore. But imagine now here's Jay. He's doing a plus two. He's getting a better lactic acid production. So it's a better workout than weights. He's creating more lactic acid. Three, four, five, six minutes of lactic acid. That's better than heavy weights. So he's not only producing a plus one for change, he's creating a plus two. But there's no cortisol. So this plus two is all anabolic. Here comes the growth hormone, goes down the liver, gives you IGF-1. You get bone-specific alkaline phosphatase. You get vascular endothelial growth factor. Here comes testosterone release. Thyroid goes up. Fat starts burning. It's like somebody's hitting you with the juice. It's like you're on steroids. Well, you are. You're on your own, you're on your own steroids. So in summary, what all of you are going to experience when you dial the bands in, you'll get them dialed in and take you a few times, is... When you go get this efficient 10, 12, 15 minute workout and you efficiently create fatigue like you're an Olympic athlete, by the way, you're feeling it like an Olympic athlete would and you trigger nitric oxide and growth hormone and then you multiply that with no stress. And I'm, we'll come back in the con. I'm going to teach you where the stress is at. How, you, how do you know? How do you know 10, 12, 15, 20 minutes when you combine it with no stress? You go anabolic. I mean, you, you go, I mean, I can't even, 
tell you what you're doing to your body. I don't think you could combine all the gadgets and cool things you got. And I've got a Beamer and I've got infrared. I mean, I got all the gadgets and I'm not giving them up. I'm keeping my gadgets. I got a patch on my back right now. I love all that stuff. But if I'm being honest with you, if, if you if you were to say, Mike, you can either have all your gadgets and I got a pop up infrared sauna and I pump ozone into it and I got a water smack. I mean, I got it all. If somebody said to me, Mike, you can have all that or you can have your bands. Easy. It's easy. That's it. You can have all my gadgets. You can have them. All. You're not taking my bands because this is how I tap into, you know, my nitric oxide and growth hormone. And if you're spiritual, I mean, God gave it to us. If not, doesn't matter. It's still sitting there. It's the most powerful two substances in the world. And you start tapping into it. I mean, you're you're going to have stories like this and you're going to live a different kind of life. So in summary, I mean, that's what you're doing in the body. So, Jay, I'm going to give it back to you now. And, and you know, where do we want to go with this? And by the way, I love Wim Hof, Jay. My longest was seven minutes and I, I'm not going to do that again. I got a horrible headache when I went seven minutes one time. That was a mistake. Ooh. Yeah. Um, let's just go to some folks' questions because I didn't I didn't want this to be a long, long meeting. Go ahead, George. Nope, no, nope, that was not me. No, I oh. I was that was me, Jay. I, this is Doug. Yeah, I just wondered to, if you have a couple minutes, I just wanted to explain something about hydration. Yeah, yeah, dude. So, you know, a lot of times every you hear a lot of people talk about hydration, how important it is. So everybody thinks, well, we're just going to drink more and we're going to be more hydrated. And that's not true. You know, you can drink as much as you want. That really doesn't matter. Of course, we need water. But what really counts is how much blood flow gets into the cell. So you can have really strong lungs, really strong heart. But every cell in your body, whether it's a skin cell, brain cell, muscle cell, has a liposomal membrane that surrounds and protects the integrity of the cell. Well, because of toxicity, because of bad things we eat, because of a lot of things, those membranes get a little thicker and less permeable. So it makes it harder for the blood to flow into the cell. So without blood flow, well, let's say with blood flow, blood carries hydration, it carries nutrition, form of glucose, and it carries oxygen. That's what we need because the more hydration you get into the muscle cell the heavier the muscle is going to be our muscles are hydraulic so the stronger you're going to be the more energy you're going to have because of the oxygen so that's what makes all these changes and where the bands come into that from what i understand the nitric oxide works to open up the endothelial cell to allow more blood flow to the cell and I've seen a lot of very frustrated people because they think they're in great shape, but their cellular hydration is very, very low. We measure that on a daily basis. And if anyone has low cellular hydration, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't as far as drinking water or anything like that. I've even seen people go as far as go to a get get IV, right? We'll get an IV, run a bag. And that still not does not open up the cell. It gets more fluid in the in the bloodstream it'll raise your blood pressure but it does not get more blood into the cell and that's where the bands make a huge difference and i think that's why dave can go up that hill a lot longer i think that's what you're benefiting also jay yeah that's that's awesome information and before i get into your guys questions we're going to do questions for like 15 minutes so we'll go quick on those i want to keep this at about an hour um, I just want to say this. I, I, I know people. When I say that I know, I know. <laughs> no, just kidding with you guys. That's off of a movie. Um, I know, I do know people. And I can tell you that Dr. Mike, when you guys hear him talk, there's a chance you could mistake him for a fast talking Gomer Powell. There's a chance you could mistake him for the sales guy on TV. But let me just let me just explain something to you. He is unbelievably passionate about getting this product into the hands of people. Why? Because his whole life is filled 
with talking to people like me, talking to people like Doug, talking to people like Dave, where they're going, holy crap, I can't believe this. I can't believe how good I feel. I can't, I've been working out for 20 years and I've never felt like this. And guys, that's something that you can sink your teeth into. And that creates passion. So don't mistake Dr. Mike for a salesman. He's not a salesman. He's a doctor who's passionate and extremely knowledgeable about what he has to sell, what he has to offer. Okay. Just don't make the mistake of, of, of uh, looking at him and going, man, as fast as he talks and the things he talks about and the tone and the pitch and the tempo that he's a salesman. He's not a salesman at all. I'm a salesman. I've been selling stuff my whole life. If you sit down at a table with me, you're signing the contract, okay? He is passionate about his product. And don't make the mistake of viewing him in a different light. All right, guys, let's go to a couple of your questions. <clears throat> uh, so someone's asking, what happens if you grow your muscles and you need new bands? Well, you buy a bigger band, Jay Fly. You just step up to the pump and buy a bigger band because you're wealthy, my friend. The key word to being wealthy is well, well, a well where everyone can come and get a drink. Everyone can get a drink from your well because you're wealthy. So it's no big deal. Pass your bands on to somebody else and be a blessing to someone else and get you some more bands. Uh, let's see here. Can a person use the bands who has COPD, chronic obstruction pulmonary? I think you covered that a little bit, Mike, but do you want to hit that again? Yeah, think of it this way, everyone. D Doug made an important point. He said the cells want to hydrate, right? And they want to absorb nutrients. But without good blood flow into the cells, right? And what does what is basically an organ? An organ is a makeup of cells. So we all think in terms of blood flow into our joints and into our legs and into our heart and into our brain. But every tissue has blood flow, your prostate, your lungs. And here's what studies show on chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with BFR shows that it improved the function of the lungs. Well, what's going to happen if you improve blood flow to a lung tissue that doesn't have good blood flow? It does the tissue itself right? Doesn't have enough oxygen. Well, in the heart, they call it ischemic heart disease, right? In the, in the blood vessels, they call that hardening of the arteries. In the joints, they call that arthritis. In the brain, they call that brain, degener brain degeneration or Alzheimer's, right? So when you increase nitric oxide and, and endothelial, we're talking about, with your workout, you increase blood flow, to the entire body. So I work out my arm, my, my toes got better blood flow. I work out my leg, my heart's got better blood flow. So here's what the studies show on kidneys, lungs, hearts, brain, brain increased cerebral blood flow, chronic, chronic kidney disease improved. And it goes back to a cellular level, what Doug's talking about. We're improving blood flow and oxygen and vital life to all the cells in your body the way you're supposed to do it with vigorous exercise by elevating nitric oxide. So yes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease has shown positive results. And I think you're going to get great results in, in every tissue of your body. You start producing nitric oxide. Someone's asking here, Dr. Mike, uh, how do these bands work for abdominal exercises? Any muscle work during an exercise session is going to get the benefits of post-exercise growth hormone. So you drop down on the floor and you do a core workout and you don't release any growth hormone. That's option number one. That's what most people do. So now post-exercise, there's no adaptation. What's adaptation? Your body changing it, burning up fat down there, making them stronger, more defined. Okay, so now you go do a BFR workout first, five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes. You create growth hormone, which is going to come after the exercise. Now you go do your core. Same workout, same stomach workout or plank or whatever you want to do or medicine ball. But now you got post-exercise growth hormone because you did BFR first. It's the systemic response. Any muscle I work during a BFR session with or without the bands afterward gets the benefit of post-exercise growth hormone. Now what happens? It's like you've noticed, Jay. Everything's getting tighter. Everything's getting leaner. You're getting 
thinner in the bottom, you're getting wider at the top, you know, and you're probably not doing a couple thousand sit-ups, but you're getting the benefit of growth hormone that goes everywhere. So for everybody on the call, core is important, stomach, but do it after you do your BFR. You got growth hormone afterward to make the change. Yeah, I create most of my abs in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. You know, meaning that in my nutrition, right? Yeah. So exactly. I do I do abdominal workouts two days a week, but I I I am very conscious of what goes in this body. So that's what I would tell you guys that are interested in working your abs, work them in the kitchen. Um, you know, get off the potato chips, quick cook them with the oil. Do you know you can cook your vegetables with water? I, I you can take you can take butter and olive oil and cook up a bunch of onions and peppers and whatever mushrooms in a pan and I'll go right beside you and I'll use water and mine will taste better than yours will. Um, so just, you know, work on it that way, guys. Um, let's see here. Is there any reason to get a different size band? So I put the, the band chart up here, guys, on the screen. So you should be looking at it. So that tells you what sizes you need. Um, you know, Doug is the one who actually sent me my first set of bands. Thank you, Doug, for that. I'm sorry I was so hard headed that you couldn't send them a year earlier. Um, but he sent a set for me and he sent a set for my wife. So he kind of picked the sizes. And, you know, guys, just look at the size chart and get the bands you need. And, and some of you guys, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what you're ordering because I've never even logged into my back office. In fact, I needed something not long ago and I leaned on Mike and he allowed me to, he allowed me to do that. Thank you for that, Mike. Um, I've never even logged into the back office or anything, but um, I don't know what you guys are ordering. But I mean, if I'm, if it's me and, and, and I have a spouse and both of us are active people, I'm getting a set of bands for me and her. Like we, my wife and I go for hikes every day. Look, guys, growth hormone is not just to give you a nice little bicep or a calf muscle. You should see what's happening to the skin on my body from these bands. It's phenomenal. Can't not believe it. And, and, and I, I thought it was good after 30 days. Now, after 60 days, I'm going, yeah, let's keep this going. Because look, guys, on this planet, the planet comes at you for your age. And once you get a certain age, the only thing you have to combat uh, gravity is muscle. That's it. Once you get a certain age, all you got left is muscle to combat gravity. Uh, let's see here. Just reading a couple of yours, guys. How is flexibility impacted by these bands? I think Dr. Mike hit on that in his first call, but Dr. Mike hit that again, would you? Well, we, we, we stretch for two reasons. We stretch to warm up. You don't need to stretch to warm up with the bands. Nobody's, at, nobody's ever called me and said, I pulled a muscle. Why? Because you pull a muscle when it's cold. The bands, right? We're not, we're not putting the bands on and sprinting. We're not putting the bands on and trying to squat 500 pounds. What are we doing? We're putting the bands on doing light weights. So you're warming up the muscle the way it was designed. All, all of you using the bands, are, oh yeah, my muscles are warmed up. I don't feel like I need to stretch. So you don't need to pre-stretch you're not going to pull the muscle. You're not overloading it. Now, if you have flexibility issues, right? I've got some, I got a right hamstring, you know, do, do, do the stretching you love to do afterward. You want to stretch on a cold, cold muscle or a warm muscle. That's easy. You, you do some stretching or some yoga after the bands. When you've got nitric oxide, you're going to see flexibility changes, you know, dramatically because you're stretching a warmed up muscle that's full of blood. It'll let go. There's things in there and we won't go into details, but you got Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles that are fighting you when you're trying to stretch cold muscle. So it's pretty much a waste of time. But afterward, wow. So if you love stretch, do a little BFR first, get the muscles warm and you'll have an awesome stress stretching session afterward. So someone says here they have a size four leg band, uh, Dr. Mike. And they're saying it's about one and a half to two centimeters too small to fit right at the top of the leg like you show on your videos. And they're saying, will it still work if I'm using it slightly lower on the leg? Now, you want to keep it up high, but um, for that person on the call, please email us, right? I'm going to give you some emails here at the end. All these questions you're giving us, these should be answered in one hour. 
Okay, so if you've been holding on to them, we have a whole team and I do live calls. So what, what I want everybody to know when you leave this call is I want your question emailed to either me, my coaches, or my support team so that you don't you don't have to wait. These are one hour questions, everyone. So the band we want up high on the thigh because that's the access to the major vein up there. And you can have, as long as you can get the Velcro through the little pole, the little loop and down, you can have a big gap in the band. But if that's not big enough to get up high, then we probably need to get you in a pair of sizes, fives for for time being. I mean, you're talking about 190, 200 bucks to get a pair of size fives. No big deal, buy them separate. And hey, when you lose 10, 15, 20 pounds and you move down to a number four, that's a good problem to have. But we want to get up high on the thigh. Now, you can use them a little lower. It's just not going to be very effective. But we definitely want to stay up high on the arm and definitely want to stay high on the leg. So if you don't have the right size, when we get to the end here and get the emails, get a hold of my team and, and get the right size. You deserve, you know, the right size to get an effective workout. Thanks to, thanks to everyone for pulling this on. My question is, is it more important to just get a burn versus the type of exercise you do? For example, can you just walk, get a burn for three minutes and that'll be enough? Will it still help all muscle groups, et cetera? So two things, your goal is to get a little cardio, okay? Try and get a little cardio four or five days a week. I get it every day, okay? In the bands, pick your favorite cardio, walk, treadmill, you name it. You need three to five minutes. The ideal situation is you're 30 seconds in, you feel the burn, you hang in there for two or three minutes. You want to shortcut it, just sit up against the wall, okay? And then ideally, you want another three or four days a week of strength training. You know what strength training is. Work your biceps, work all your major muscle groups, right? So you want to do, you know, that combination. But the if, if we're to break this down to say, Dr. Mike, why do you use the bands? And how often do you use them? Here's my response. I want my growth hormone and nitric oxide, and I don't care how I get it but I'm getting it every day. It could be stairs, could be quick push-ups, could be a gym experience, but I'm going to get my nitric oxide and growth hormone. I can, get, I can get it by doing anything. So the most important thing for longevity and health is you are operating on 18-year-old levels of nitric oxide and growth hormone. Now, you want to improve your run, you want to build your guns, you want to lift here, you want to tighten that. Okay, get specific. You know, every, you get specific. I, you know, I want guns. I want, I want to have some nice pipes. You know, my girlfriend likes them. So, you know, I, I tend to focus on my arms a little bit. But number one, get growth hormone and nitric oxide. Number number two, go after the vanity things. Number three, hey, you want to break a push up record or you want to run further? Then, then go get that. But let's go back to what I said at the beginning. Do something you will be doing 30 days from now, and I promise you this will change your life. If you do something rigid, you know, temporary, you're going to quit in 30 days, and you're, we're going to fall right back into the same trap. So do something you love with the bands, and for everybody, it's something different. Absolutely, guys. Um, someone's asking if you can speak about the backlog of straps. They said they've been waiting now two weeks for their straps. I have noticed that the when I got mine, I guess they came really, really quick, and the first couple of folks got theirs really quick. Are you guys experiencing a backlog right now, Dr. Mike? Yeah, yeah, we had a pump issue. We lost a, a shipment of pumps. I don't know where it got lost, fell in the ocean or something. So we got behind about 10 to 12 days, but we had a big shipment go out last week, and then most of the people on the call that are asking, you're going to ship Tuesday, and I've been personally responding to you. So we're pretty close to getting caught up, but it's crazy how you got 20 SKUs in one SKU, you know, on a ship that doesn't arrive really through a wrench. Never happened to us before, but I appreciate everybody's patience. Make sure you're emailing us, right, and reaching out to us. I've already, you know, emailed a couple of you this morning. By the way, I read, I read these emails 24-7. So when you need support, just know I can't help you if you're unless you reach out to us. So immediately email us when you have a situation or question so I can help you but we got another set all the people who are back ordered should be rolling out on Tuesday you're going to get a personal email from me when it goes out and later in the day you'll get tracking and thank you for all your patience we're going to we're close to getting caught up on everybody so for any of you guys that are interested in the what I talked about earlier from Dr. Sears Scott is so good here to remind me he says you're talking about Dr. Al Sears 
he called it the PACE workout, progressive accelerating cardiopulmonary exertion. So you guys can look that up. It's fantastic. Somewhere I have all, all of his videos downloaded because I bought his program. Uh, let's see here. I watch videos on BFR on YouTube. Am I correct when I say that endurance and pump capacity is increased with the bands? However, it doesn't build strength, which still requires weightlifting. Great question. Hey, I want to address that pace thing. Here's what we've done for 100 years with exercise, everyone. We keep coming up with new, and I think pace is awesome. We keep coming up with a different spin on creating fatigue right? You know this. You can't just go for a walk. You got to run the stadium stairs or nothing's going to happen. You can't just get on the treadmill and listen to your playlist. You got to put the incline up, right? You can't just drop down and do 30 push-ups and 20 sit-ups. You got to create the burn. Every single P90X, Insanity, 75 hard. These are awesome ways to do the same thing we've always known create fatigue and, and you can apply any of this to working out with the bands so what are the bands doing the bands are basically reducing the fuel reducing the oxygen so that you don't have to do all this work you're creating a 75 hard environment you're creating pace in five minutes with the bands you're creating insanity you're creating p90x you're creating a 45 minute peloton you're just doing it five ten minutes you're just hacking and cheating you're manipulating or we figured out a new way to do it. So just know all of these super smart guys, they're trying to create a robust anaerobic fatigue, dropping oxygen in your muscles, and they're trying to create the burn. We've just figured out hack into it. We just figured out how to hack into it. Now, somebody was asking about, Jay, I, I kind of went off on that because I wanted people to get that. Could you I want to make sure I got that question you asked. Let me read it to you again. It says here, am I correct when I say that your endurance and pump capacity is increased with the bands? However, it doesn't build strength, which is which still requires weightlifting. No. And I would have agreed with him. But no, that's not correct anymore. That's old science. Strength. Yeah, not strength is not a sole byproduct of how much weight you put on the muscle. Strength is a hormonal change. Let me tell you where strength comes from, everyone. You do a workout and you create recruitment of your fast twitch muscle fibers, right? These are the ones that control strength and you fatigue them. But it doesn't matter if you fatigue them with heavy weights, you got to produce lactic acid. It doesn't matter if you fatigue them with BFR, you're producing lactic acid. What's the lactic acid do? It stimulates growth hormone and IGF-1, and it, it causes a strength change in the muscle. How do I know this? USA Olympic weightlifting team's using this. It's a secret. First guy to ever lift and deadlift 1,000 pounds, Chris Duffin. Everybody go look up Chris Duffin, D-U-F-F-I-N. He's got all of his strength guys around the world now doing this. Not exclusively, but doing this. And then go read the studies. Studies show. I'll give you one study, everyone, and then I'll show you where to go find it. Go read the Lubbers study, L-U-E-B-B-E-R-S. Took a group of Kansas high school football players, and they did traditional back squats with 70% of one rep max. That's your typical three sets of eight. And the other group did three sets of 20 to 30 with 30% of one rep max, a third of the weight with BFR. So you'd think, well, maybe the BFR group got an equal strength. Wasn't even close. The BFR group had dramatically more strength. Why? Everybody go back to what I, this formula I told you. Jay's creating a plus one fatigue in his strength training, right? What if he creates a plus two? Well, the bands allow you to do that. And when you experience it, you're going to feel this deeper pump or burn. You're going deeper into burning glycogen in your muscles. It's a deeper fatigue. And Jay says, I mean, I gotta release, I have to release the pressure, my muscles are so swollen. He's fatiguing deeper. So what's happening is you're creating a deeper fatigue and you're turning on a stronger anabolic signal. You can do it with heavy weights, but there's a price to pay 
and most of you can't produce a, enough fatigue with the heavy weights, you're not an Olympic weightlifter, or you can do it with the man's, and the studies back it up. So I think for the person asked that question, you're going to see if you if you if you're measuring your strength, you're going to see it you're going to see it go up. You start using the bands, and it, and it's been proven in science. So and I used to think no, but I mean, we've got thousands of people now more strength using bands and less trauma, less damage on the body. Uh, here's an interesting one, Dr. Mike. I think we should make sure we get to this one. He says have about seven workouts in with the bands been lifting heavy weights for over 20 years and I would call myself an elite lifter. Noticed when I do hard workouts with the bands, my ears tend to get slightly plugged for some time afterward. Any reason for this? Yeah, Brian, you know, I've got several theories of why that might, might be happening, but I, I need to know more about, are you still lifting heavy weights? What are you doing? And by the way, everyone, in the world of BFR, to let you know, nobody does what I'm doing. And there's, a, there's, there's 20 companies out there. Nobody coaches and then answers questions like this. I'm the only company doing it. So here's what you do, Brian and everybody on the call, right? You email us, and I'm going to put these emails in here. You email us at coach at b3sciences.com. And Brian, I just need to, I'm going to need to ask you a couple questions. And then I will help you diagnose what's going on. So. It might be the increase in blood flow temporarily in the ear. It, you know, it could be could be several things going on, but I want to ask him a few more questions. And then mostly I want to ask him how long that plug feeling lasts. Is it temporary? My guess is it's a couple minutes, then it goes away. Well, and also I think I would want the word hard qualified when he says I do hard workouts with the bands. Yeah. Um, does that mean he's, like you said, is he lifting real heavy weight? It tells you flat out, don't be doing heavy weight. Do, mm -hmm. you know, don't go over 20 minutes, right? So yeah. I, I've just stuck to the program that you taught me when I first got my bands. And man, I'm having phenomenal results. No plugged ears. Uh, I mean, a couple of times I felt nauseous. The very first time I worked out with these, I kind of felt lightheaded. That was the first time I probably actually felt the nitric oxide flow through my body. And another time I got a little nauseous because I hadn't eaten in 16 hours and I did an ab workout first and then worked out with the bands. And I, and I literally had to stop, sit down, eat a banana, take a rest. And I went back and finished my workout. But otherwise, I've had zero feelings, effects or whatever other than just, man, I feel good. Right. Yeah. But, I've, but I've also done what you what you teach to do on all your videos. You know, I, I, I used to do a dumbbell workout with 40 pounds, starting with 40 pounds, going up to 50 pounds, and I'd have multiple sets. I'm now doing my, I'm now doing my bicep workouts with 10 pounds, 12 pounds, and doing, like he says, 30 repetitions. So anyway, I do think there should be a qualifier there, and, and maybe you, you, got, you two can connect and help him with that. Uh, let's see here. Any evidence using the bands can stimulate hair growth? I guess you would ask that question because of the uh, human growth hormone. Have you seen any of that at all, Dr. Dr. Mike? Well, you know, for everybody on the call, here's, here's, you know, my, my makeup. If I've got science, you, you may hear me sound like a salesman because I'm excited. I don't have any science on hair growth. So here's what I would say. Here's what I tell everybody when you're going to ask me something about a possible condition and BFR, I'd say, okay, let's back up and say, what's BFR? BFR is stimulating vigorous high intensity exercise. So what I would do is I'd go to Google and I'd type in vigorous exercise and hair regrowth and see if there's any science. A lot of times Harvard or Yale or, or PubMed, they'll have an article on it. And if you can find an article that says, for example, vigorous high intensity exercise helps with nail fungus well we can duplicate vigorous high intensity exercise with bfr then we can make the connection but i don't have any science to back me up making a comment about the hair regrowth so speaking of hair regrowth uh i don't know if you know this about dave schmidt over at lifewave but he created a patch that will make your hair grow he just can't he just can't keep it from growing all over your body <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a match sale today. He, 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 Jay, you know how you know how David does his workouts? I guess he does them with the bands. 
Yeah, yeah, he's good. Became a good friend. I want to actually meet him sometime, but I had a lot of conversations, and yeah, he loves his bands. I ask him the next time you're talking to him about his his experimenting <laughs> to, create a, to create a patch to grow hair on people's head and how he he accomplished that, but yet they, they were growing hair all over their whole body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, we're going to do two more questions, and we're going to let Dr. Mike go. George and I are going to get back to our weekend. Uh, someone says, it sounds like the bands will help keep Alzheimer's at bay. <clears throat> Great question. So let's, let's, let's quote a study. Studies show, first of all, everyone, when you lose muscle, you lose your brain. It's called the biodirectional relationship. It's a Harvard thing, okay? This, this is why they tell seniors to strength train. If you maintain muscle, then you maintain your brain. They're directly related. And I'll tell you why, because there's a little thing called brain-derived nootropic factor that we don't have time. It's kind of like growth hormone for your brain. It stays elevated in people who maintain muscle, okay? So now you're losing muscle, and right behind it, you're going to lose your brain. But if you start putting muscle back on, then you're going to start putting brain back on. And studies show that when you do BFR and you get the burn, you elevate cerebral blood flow and brain-derived nootropic factor. Go read about it, everyone. B, D, N, F, or just go to our website. By the way, every one of these topics, you can go on my website and just, just go to the brain section. So there's been case studies on all kinds of different brain issues, but putting muscle on is probably the most important thing you can do for your brain, and that's a Harvard fact we're going to put muscle back on with bfr and studies have backed that it. it is very beneficial for your brain now i'm not saying we're going to be curing things but you want to protect your brain you want to have the best function you got to have muscle and this is how you put muscle on the easiest way uh so we're going to actually do two more from here because i saw this one and it relates to something you said earlier this person that was uh, talking about the size four versus the size five band, they're asking um, they couldn't find the size five bands on the site. Are you still are you still selling them? Oh, yeah, they're in there. But if you've already purchased a set, everyone, right, you just respond to one of those emails support at B3sciences.com. I'll put it in here support at b3sciences.com and right you need to get an extra pair but if you go to the shopping cart where george is probably going to pull up the website and, and we'll show you you go right into the shopping cart and you choose your sizes right you can you can choose the five now if you did the founder program right that might be somebody saying which some of you have done man i'm excited you're, you're going to be a founder in our company then you just need to reply to the emails you get and say, hey, I, I need a size five, swap out one of those. But the key here is communication. So just make sure you you reach out to us at support at b3sciences.com and um, we'll make sure you get the fives or we'll swap them out or we'll exchange them for you. All right, so now to the one, the other question I was gonna do. Do the bands respond differently to the male body and the female body metabolically and muscle development? From a f fatigue standpoint, the bands are doing the same thing in both both bodies. The bands are creating a more efficient fatigue and a plus one or plus two anaerobic and aerobic workouts. Now, post exercise, hormones are different in a female body, right? And for the females on the call, you're not going to be you're not going to be a Miss Olympia. You're not going to put too much muscle on. Elevating this growth hormone. And the other hormones in your body is not going to turn you into a bodybuilder. It's not going to happen. You'd have to go synthetic hormones. I'll tell you what it is going to do. It's just going to start toning you up. It's going to make you lean, give you lines. You're going to absolutely love it. And ladies, it's going to benefit your thyroid, your mood, your emotions. All those, all those things are going to be elevated when you're getting this exercise. And ladies, you have even more stress in your life when you release cortisol. And I've had to help so many ladies slow down, stop working out so long, overtraining, which has a very negative effect on your thyroid and a very negative effect on cortisol. You start getting these short workouts, take stress off the thyroid and the cortisol, man, you're going to love it. And just like us guys, we get all our male wonderful things that are improved in our lives. Ladies notice the same thing, energy. 
right? Mood, all the, all the wonderful things that can happen for them in their lives are improved with short, efficient, vigorous exercise. So I wanted to mention that, you know, Jake, because you said earlier, it's common for women to say, well, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. It's not going to happen when, when yeah. you do this. All right. So the last thing, and this is not a question, Mike, uh, from the group. Um, so just, just, to, just so that you guys are clear about this, um, at, the, at the level I've hit in life financially, I'm probably not ever doing network marketing again, okay? I'm probably not ever going to be the guy who goes and does all the meetings and travels the world. I've done all that. I've been all <laughs> over the world speaking to people, and I'm not doing that again. However, I would like Mike to tell you guys what he has in place for any of you guys that are interested in growing this. You're interested in having a business out of it. You're interested in you know, talking to anybody willing to stand still. You're interested in the, the gym you go to, everybody having bands on six months from now. Because I do believe in, it's not that I don't believe in the product, it's not that I don't believe in Dr. Mike, I do. I'm just not that guy anymore. But he's probably got a system in place you guys can plug into. Mike, will you just talk about that for a minute? I will. So everybody on the call, you can do one of three things. You can be a customer and just get the bands, right? You're going to buy the bands. You're going to get coaching. You're going to get access to the live calls. Number two, and, and we'll ask George to put the website up because there's two websites. If you want to just get an affiliate link, okay? You just want to have a link to share, and you know what an affiliate link is, right? You post it. You share it, right? You can be what's called a brand partner. It's a free affiliate link. So when you check out, at the Pro B3 website, you just check a little box that says, yes, I'd like a link. You're not doing network marketing. You're not turning into a business. You just got a link. And we'll send you a great commission every time you refer. And then you can go to the next level, which is, is called our member or founder. Now, this also is not, is, is not super expensive. But if you look at it and say, you know, I'd like to have a little business, five, 10 hours a week. I'd like to get certified. Hey, I love network marketing. If you'd like to turn this into a little business or even a full-time business, that's, you know, that's the third level that we have. And we have something called the founder program. And many of you have done that. And by the way, when you do the founder, you, you save like five or six hundred dollars. You get three sets of bands. You get a BFR certification course. Many people do it just to get the six hour certificate. I'll certify you. you. Take a six hour online course, you'll be certified. And then you can you can work it like a little business or a full fledged business. Now let me tell you who who typically does this: people who are busy. Right? Doug Zuko's busy. Doug's got a thriving business. He's a founder, but he's doing this as an add on, you know, to what he already does. So and it's got a a very powerful network marketing payout structure. So three ways again: customer, brand partner, or you can do founder. Um, and if you got any questions about those, you just email us, you know, and we'll get on the phone and explain those to you if you can't find them on the website. But if George could put up those two websites, jw.proB3 and then jw.b3, you know, those are the two websites you can go look at to choose what option you want to come in. And by the way, if you want to start as a customer and upgrade later a founder, you can do that too. Okay, and and I will also include those because I'll, I'll I'd have to uh, take the board. Um, I will include both of those down below when I uh, uh, when I post this, just like I did in the other time. So awesome, thanks, um, George. Yeah. Yeah. By so the way, my, everyone, last thing, if I could yeah, say just ahead. one thing, I work individually with founders, and as Jay told you, me and Jay talk business about five percent of the time. Just know if when you become a founder and you start working with me, we're going to be focusing 80, 90 percent on I want you to get results. If we're not getting results, I can tell you this. I'm not talking business to you. When you, I want you to get the most fabulous results you can possibly get. And when you're getting those, then we can turn it into, you know, a thriving business. I, you know, I got a new friend, Jim Doolittle. He's awesome. Jim, hope, hope I didn't you know, you got your name in there, but you know, he's a big pickleball guy, but we've been talking about getting gym results, right? And now we're going to, you know, share it in the pickleball world. So part of being a founder is you get my personal access to help you get results. And then we'll also talk about whatever you want to do from the business side. So that's also another awesome benefit as we get to work individually together. Yeah. And guys, I mean, look, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't personally believe that 
a year, two, three years from now that Mike's going to be able to do that. So take advantage of that. There's going to come a time where that number on the screen there is not 41,597 sets of bands or customers who've ordered bands. It's going to be 400,000 bands. And at that point in time, Mike's just one person. He'll have to do things in groups. He'll have to, he'll have growing pains. He'll have to adjust. He'll have to do whatever. So right now, if you're a founder, take advantage of that. I mean, I don't ever turn down a call from, from Dr. Mike. And, you know, I think he and I have talked maybe what once a week or once every other week since about the time that I got my bands. So, uh, and we've had, we have great conversations and it's none, none of it is it about how to grow a network marketing business. Not any of it has been about that. If I wanted to talk about that, I'm sure he would do that, but he talks about what I want to talk about. So he, he's a great founder in that way. Dr. Mike, thank you for coming again this morning and uh, offering even additional support from what I can do. And, um, and we just appreciate your product, man. I love it. I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm sold and I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Thank you. And by the way, everyone, next Sunday, we'll be getting an email to all of you. For those of you who want to know more about the, you know, the sharing and the business side once a month, I do a call that you're welcome to come to and, and we'll talk a little bit about how to do the business. So if you're in or you're getting in next Sunday at um, in the evening on a similar Zoom platform, I'll be inviting those of you who want to ask questions about the business side. And we do that once a month. So we'll make that available to you because we want to support you on that side also. Awesome. George, if you don't right. mind, get get this put on YouTube, okay? I absolutely I will uh, I will get that out and I will do the shorts too. Wonderful. All right, guys, have a good Sunday. I'm off to uh, kiss my wife on the veranda. Talk with you guys soon. Thanks, everyone.